what's up? They sneaked out without paying you with no money. All right, Mick. You haven't seen Dicko, have you? I can't help you, mate. I haven't seen him today. Oh, typical, isn't it? I go to all the trouble of getting him some fresh produce and he can't even wait in five minutes for me. You have to work? No, uh, me and Terry are going to look at some second-hand cars, are we? Thinking of setting up on our own, you know. All oh, right, two tycoons and the one else, eh? Josie in the market stall, you and your cars, you'll be rolling in it before long. It'll be a while before that happens. Looks as if you're doing all right. What this? I to borrow this off a mate to get one stuff. Wish I hadn't bothered now. I probably won't be long soon. I don't know if I was you, mate. I've got no choice, have I? I've got no money till long gets back. See, that's the problem with being self employed, Michael. No cash flow. Any money you do gets your own, though. No, and the tax man's. Mind you, there are ways of not paying it, anyway, have you? <laughs> by not declaring your earnings, you mean? Well, well, by using this for the start. A couple of chamois in a bucket. Well, you know. Listen, I better be going, mate. We'll talk business another time, eh? Yeah, if you ever need any advice, like. Yeah, I'll come to you first. See you later. All right, Rud. All right, Mick. Yeah, before you start, it's got tax on it and it passed its MOT with flying colours. Oh, I was just wondering how our Jimmy was. Only haven't seen him for ages. Well, he's been busy, hasn't he? So he's not trying to avoid me, then? Well, not that I know of. I mean, well, he was round at yours the other week, wasn't he? I know, yeah. Julie said he was trying to flog us some watches or something. Watches? I know the score. Any now Jimmy's involved in, it's bound to be dodgy. So you give him this message. Next time you see him, tell him I don't want any of his knock-off gear in my house, right? Yeah, that's all right. All right. Cheers, sir, man. See you, lad. There's <sighs> nothing to do around here. It's step boring. So, what was your night out like with Margaret? It was all right. Did you cop off? Casey, is that all you think about? Well, did you? You did, didn't you? What's he like? Oh, go on, tell us. Well, if you must know, I saw Owen again. Did he ask you to go out with him? Oh, is this question time or something? I don't know if Owen asked you out. It's no big deal. When did Owen come back on the scene? Thanks a lot, Case. But I didn't know... It's all right, love. Casey's big mouth. Can't blame her, Sam. I found out anyway. Look, I like Owen. I've got nothing against you seeing him again. It's just... Well... In fact, I may not be seeing lads your own age. It's just I'm a bit confused, you know? I mean, you rip up his Valentine card, you treat him like dirt, call him all the names under the sun. I just didn't expect you to tell me you were seeing him again. Yeah, well, that was ages ago. I mean, things change all the time. Nothing stays the same, you know. I know that, love. I just don't want to see you getting hurt again. Dad, I'm a big girl now. I can handle it. I know. But, I mean, are you ready to start seeing lads again? I mean, you're still getting over that Tim fella. Look. Me and Owen, we're just mates. I've had enough of living my life for other people. So from now on, I'm going to think about me, think about what I want out of life. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. Just be careful, love, OK? Is everything all right? Yeah, fine. Look. I'm going to nip into town, get out of Jeff for going away. Prezzy, do you want anything? No, no, I'm all right. All right, so I'll see you later. Then. What's happened, love? Ah, uh, Sammy. You see no one again. Hmm. When did this happen? I don't know. But I, I feel a bit uneasy about it. Well, I thought you'd like doing. Well, I do. But doing things a bit sudden. Oh, on the rebound, you mean? Well, don't you? Well, maybe. But I think you're playing the overprotective father who doesn't want to see his daughter get her fingers burnt again. Frank, oh, Sammy's been through hell in the last few months. I mean, isn't it only natural she wants to put the past behind her, get on with being a teenager again? Yeah. I suppose so. Now, that's what I call a real car. I couldn't even afford the tyres on this. Oh, come on, Mick, let's get going, eh? I should have started my shift half an hour ago. Hold your horses, will you? This is our future we're talking about. 
Any help? No, I'm a daydreamer, isn't it? Your daydreams cost me money. You know what? I think we should start a VIP service. I fancy a better class of clientele. No Saturday night drunk spewing all over the backseat. No, instead you get a posh kind of snob spewing up champagne instead of beer. What's the matter with you, Tess? You've done nothing but moan ever since we got here. <sighs> Losing money makes me miserable. We don't exactly earn that much, do we? Not what I call real money. I don't want to put a damper on your enthusiasm, but I have been a private eye cabby before. You get nothing but hassle. But it doesn't have to be like that. Not when it's our business. Nobody to answer to, no middleman to worry about taking the profits, just us. I think it'd be a great idea. We'd be laughing all the way to the bank. Oh, yeah. Sullivan and Johnson, millionaires, eh? Oh, what's the matter? Don't you want to own your own business? Do you want to wait your goods out for someone else? I'm not saying that. Look, all I'm saying is, why don't we have a good look around before we start to buy anything? Yeah, but there's no harm in looking, is there? I mean, I do realise we've got to save up a few bob first. Yeah, look, what about this? Save up? I'm just about keeping my head above water as it is. That's all my might is. And it hurts me every time I think about how much settle we've got to pay out. If we had our own cab, we'd have well over 300 notes in our own bin. Well, look, what do you reckon to this? It's all right, isn't it? You've got over four and a half grand to spare. <sighs> yeah, maybe you're right. We can never afford these prices, Tess. Hey, how about asking Barry for a loan? Barry Grant? Oh, no chance. I'm not asking him for any more money. I already owe him money, don't I? He'd be made up me owing him forever. But it'd only be the two of us. It wouldn't take that long to pay it back. I thought we wanted to start our own business, be independent. Well, if we are starting our own business, I'm not asking Barry Grant for any money. Yeah, it was just a thought. There's only one thing for it, then. We'll have to put in some extra hours and try and make the money that way. We're killing ourselves as it is. The way I see it, says we haven't got much choice. these things. Mm, I hope you sorted out your wardrobe. Well, I've got all my programmes and all these tapes and... Yeah. I meant your woolies. Oh, it's the middle of summer. Yeah, well, you'll need them at night. It's very cold in these seaside towns. All right, I I'll do it later. Got them, Ron. Got what? The chickens you asked for. Hang on. What chickens? Remember, I came round last week. Yeah, you were asking about cleaning the windows on my new shop. Yeah, and I said to you that I could get you some chickens half price. Could have sworn you said fish. It's first signs of old age that you know, on loss of memory. I definitely said chickens. All right, all right, I'll have a look. Are you in the van? Come on. Tell you what, you're lucky that my customers like a bit of chicken for the Sunday dinner. Well, you won't be sorry because these little beauties will sell out in minutes. All right. There you go. Six of the plumpest chickens I could find. Screws loose, you have. We'll just see, we'll see how it sells. Simbad, I keep trying to tell you they're still alive. Oh, you don't miss much use, do you? Like, what are you doing? You're practicing to go on the Krypton factor, or what? Hey, listen, I know my customers like the food fresh, but I think this is taking things a little bit too far. You didn't say you wanted them, Dad. I didn't say I wanted them full stop. You're having a go at me, aren't you? This is one of them late April fool jokes, isn't it? What do you mean a late April fool joke? Oh, I risked life and limb to get these here. Is this the thanks I get? Knock off more like. What are you talking about? Are you saying you don't want them? Simba, how can I seriously be expected to sell live chickens? I thought you meant the frozen kind, all wrapped up in cellophane with a little label on the top. If I try to flog those, I'm going to have the elf people hounding me, aren't I? So you don't want them, then? Well, if you can bring them back oven ready, I might reconsider. Well, that's going to cost extra, isn't it, eh? Fifty pence a head, in advance. All right, Mr Dixon, got any boxes of chocolates? Got to get our Jeff for going away, Prezi. Hey, all right, love, I'll just check in the Moby. Box load of trouble. Oh, aren't they lovely? What are you going to do with them? I'm trying to flog them to him, aren't I? They're not so cruel. I'm keeping them cooped up in a box. It's not my fault, is it? I'm only trying to scrape a living. You can't kill defenseless animals. Don't talk to me. See him about it. Oh, sorry, Case. We've run out of chocolates, love. Do you want to make him kill them, Mr Dixon? 
It's nothing to do with me, but that is chickens. What a measure you are. What do you mean, a measure? Hey, Casey, stop it! Get your best! I'm going to see you now, fella. Yeah, go on, tell him, see if I can. I'll tell the RSPCA on you and the animal rights. So much for the quiet ones. <laughs> Hello? 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 <laughs> now here's one we can afford. Do you reckon we'll attract the punters in this? I think it'd be quicker to walk. Mick, uh, I wanted to ask you a favour. All right. Yeah, uh, is there any chance of changing shifts? Any reason, like? Well, it's just with me doing nights all the time. Um, I don't get to see much of soup. Oh, that's for you. You and I have made up, aren't you? I'm back in the bedroom, if that's what you mean. Oh, I get it. No, I don't mind. You know me. Never want to stand in the way of nature. Oh, no, uh, it's not like that. No, honest, Mick, it isn't. And there's me wondering when we're going to hear the patter of tiny feet. No, I said it's not on to do with that. It's not an honest. Well, we just don't know whether we want another baby yet. But you've been through so much since the operation, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. But at least we've got the choice now, haven't we? I mean, it's up to us whether we want another baby or not. Sounds like it's up to Sue. No, it's up to both of us. Well, she's got a career in that now, hasn't she? And it's doing really well. And all the extra cash she's bringing in, it's really useful. Anyway. She never suited maternity dresses. <laughs> so what do you think? Yeah, well, you're probably best sticking to one. Two kids can be a real handful. No, I, I meant about the shifts. Oh, yeah, it's all right. I'll do some nights. It suits me. It means I can look after the kids. Then when I'm on days, I can take them in the cab with me every now and again, give them a special treat. Oh, great, they'd love that. Be able to entertain the customers. I rush them more, like, I'm going to take your Danny now and again. Yeah, uh, I think he's a bit young for that anyway. His mother would have a fit if she found out. When I get in the cab, I try and forget about kids. When I'm out on the road, I try and block everything out. If I had Danny with me, I uh, wouldn't be able to do that, would I? <laughs> nah, Casey, definitely takes after you, Chris. If she feels strongly about something, there's no stopping her. I'd love to have seen Simba chasing those chickens, though. <laughs> so do I. Do you know, I don't know what it is. I always seem to miss out on all the fun on this close. I'll get it. <laughs> Could be simmered after I Katie's blood. That'll be Polly. I should have guessed. Hang on a sec. What? Yeah. But it's okay. Don't tell your mum. Nice one. Mum's still here. Oh. Hi, Bum. Yeah, I'm chuffed to see you too. Hiya. Tea's gonna be ready in about two minutes. How just taking chips sound? Like a banquet to a starving man, Mrs. Rogers. <laughs> hey, see all the cards you got, Bumper? 25, popular, isn't he? That. Well, you are. No good being modest in your game, son. Hey, from everyone in school? Yeah, yeah. I, I got some of the teachers. Old Scrooge gave me one. He left a price tag on, like, 45p he spent, though. Yeah, well, he'd have done that just to show you how generous he is. Who's Scrooge? Our history teacher, Mr. O'Keefe. Oh, he's well tight. Walks to school every day to save bus fare money. He confiscates all our sweets and eats them in the staff room at dinner time. I'll get you that drink, Bumper. Right. That's the last one. She's becoming a like little tear away, that Katie Rogers. And you're no better, are you? Going back on the deal. Simba, I'd have told you, fetch him back when they're fit to sell. That's just it, isn't it? I can't bring myself to kill them. In fact, I've become quite attached to them. Yeah, I know what you mean. Couldn't he get Jimmy to do it? Well, what the Scarlet Pimpernel? I haven't seen sight nor sound of Jimmy for days. Afraid I don't fit into Jimmy's plans no more. Well, I'll keep them as pets, be a bit of company for you. Ron, I live in a one-bedroom masonette, not Emmerdale farm.
be looking for you. Oh, I thought it better get on with the packing, you know, if I left it to Jeffrey, it would never get done. I've left the kids watching Meadowcroft Park. I was going to get me guitar out and give me a sing song, you know, a couple of Scotty Dog classics. But you ain't having any of it. I'm grateful a lot. I better start all this again. He's never going to get everything he wants in here. What's up, love? Oh, there's nothing. Well, you know, they said two words to anyone when we were having our tea. Yeah. I just couldn't bear to look at Jeff's face when Paula didn't turn up. Well, perhaps that's for the best. I mean, he's not going to see much of her, is he? She's up here, he's down there. He didn't eat any of his apple pie. He just played with it for ages. She'll bump a good hole of it. I'll miss him too, you know. Frank, I don't want him to go. I'm not ready for this. Chris, I don't think any parent is ever prepared for the kids leaving. He's only 16. I thought I'd have him for a few more years yet until... Well, maybe until he met a nice girl and settled down. But not now, not so soon. I feel cheated out of all those years. He's got a chance to do something with his life, to make a career for himself. Make a career? He can't even boil an egg. He hasn't got a clue how to cook or look after himself. Given half a chance, he won't wash for a few weeks and his room will be a tip five minutes after he gets there. And I'll be too far away to help him. Chris, you're just going to have to be brave and let him go. Oh, it's easy for you to say, isn't it? You didn't have to carry him round inside you for nine months and look after him, changing his nappies and cooking and cleaning for him and, and his begging call for 24 hours a day. I've been looking after Jeff for 16 years now. It's going to be hard for me to let go, don't you think? Ah, uh, Jeff has got a chance to do something with his life. And I think that's the important thing. And if it means I'm going down to Torquay to do it, well, that's fine by me. Because it's him that counts, not what I feel. And of course I'll miss him. I'll be thinking about him every time the results come up on Grandstand. And I'll be lying awake at night, worrying if he's coping all right, just as much as you will be, Chris. I didn't realise that you felt that way. Hey. Hey. He's my son too, you know. It all feels so strange, like we're all going our separate ways now. Like we're not even a family anymore. Our kids are only on loan to us, Chris. They all leave sooner or later. Oh. We started off just the two of us. And we'll end up just the two of us. The future scares me. We'll be all right, love. We've always got each other. Drivers felt it was time to call a halt. And finally, a retired couple from... Constable Corkill. Didn't think we'd be seeing you again. You better get out of here before you do something you'll regret. I'm making any law standing here, am I? Well, I just thought I'd warn you, you know, in case you tried anything stupid, like threatening a police officer. Well, that's not a very nice welcome, is it, for an old friend? Are oh, your fiance, what's her name? Now, she made me feel right at home. Diana, yeah, that's it, Diana. That's about your limit, that, isn't it? Threatening a defenceless woman. You come near me, Corkle, and this'll have your leg off. Do you know what? 
That dog makes one move on me. You wish you had been born like. Oh, I'm scared. Shaking all over. When you started at Ainsworth, I thought you were all right. I thought we got on. I thought we were friends, even. That's why I let you come and see me dogs in training. I was even going to ask the owl fella if you could be a partner one day. But that's before I knew you were busy. And how do you repay me friendship? You set us up. My owl fella gets sent down. And I get community service. The cloughs are a laughing stock. All because we were taken in by some fresh faced busy. Well, now I'm going to retain the friendship in person. I'm going to get you for stitching us up, Cork Hill. Satan is going to make sure of that. This one's a champion. Have I told you? Never lost a fight. Retired now, like. I've seen him tear other dogs limb from limb without the much as a bat of an eyelid. Be interesting to see what he does to a person. Oh, well, there again, you're not a person, are you? You're just a pig. I reckon he'll finish you off good style. Dog? You've killed me, dog? I haven't killed your dog. Next time, Clark Hill, you're dead! From all of us, son. I'm Sammy. That's just what I wanted, sir. Hey, uh, you'll forgive me when it comes down to European Cup final tickets, will you? Well, it might not be this year, Dad, like that. Well, I can wait a bit. Here you go, and? Sir? Sir? Well, it's important. Yeah, I, I know, thanks. Do you think it's a bit of a waste for him? Well, what do you mean? Well, I bet you will come and visit and you'll be lying in your room covered in mud from the last match you've played in. Oh, I'm gonna miss you. Yeah, you're joking, but you will miss her. Yeah, not as much as I'll miss you, though. Give over, Mum. He's only going to talk, hey? Think he's the other side of the world the way you're carrying on. He's my only son. <laughs> well, you are. We're not exactly selling him to talk, hey? He will be allowed home for visits. Yeah, and you can come and visit me. Exactly. And what time's your coach? Ten past four. For the fifth time. Now, are you sure you've got everything? Yeah, Mum. You've got your teddy. Have you got enough food? It's a very long journey, you know. No, I've got enough sandwiches to feed the old team. I'll be all right. Chris, stop fussing. Now, listen, you got your money safe. Hello? Yeah, I'm going to minute, Paula. It's for you. She's desperate to talk to you. Sarah. Hello, Paula. Oh, it's you. Oh, Sammy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Come, Dick, go! <laughs> Don't you feel stupid being seen out with that thing? Not at all. It's a perfect example of a hen. I was talking to the hen. Oh, funny, aren't you? <laughs> well, here we are, then. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Sim, but not being a vet, of course, I could very well be, but isn't that hen still alive? Yes, and in its prime. It also has five sisters, also in clucking good form, mate. They are, in fact, a prime brood, and you're looking at money for old rope. Yeah, and the deal was for oven-ready chickens. Please, Ron, please, not in front of Tallulah. Tallulah? The best layer in town. I mean, I looked at them and I saw six chickens, and what's that, six meals? But alive, what have you got? Eggs, mate. Eggs. An endless supply of earths. I mean, around half a dozen fits neatly into a box, doesn't it? Why kill the goose that lays the golden egg? You just give them a little bit of corn and you've got a regular income. Hello, Graham. Oh, I'm not too bad, thanks. I just felt a little bit under the weather and I was owed a few hours, so I just came home. Yeah, uh, I will be. But, I mean, don't go out your way. Look here, I must go now. Thanks for ringing. Bye. So who's this Graham, then? Chap from work. I was concerned about your welfare. Yeah, he was, actually. Why? What do you mean, why? It just seems a bit odd, that's all. Why is it odd that someone phones me up? Why are you being so defensive? I'm not being defensive. I'm a little bit annoyed that you're interrogating me because I got a phone call at home from work from a colleague. Is this the fellow that gives you a lift, is he? Graham, yeah. That was another reason he phoned. See if I wanted a lift on Monday morning. I thought you said he only gives you a lift every now and again. Yeah, he does. And Monday just happens to be one of those times, does he? Terry, just what are you saying? I think it's reasonable to ask. Why, a fella I don't even know is ringing my wife at home. And I've told you, it's 1991. I'm not your property. I'm me, with a life of my own and a job where I meet and talk to other people. Now, some of them happen to be men, and some of them happen to be friends of mine. Should I tell them that I can't receive phone calls at home because my husband has banned them? Don't talk stupid. It's not me who's talking stupid. Does he give you the lift home? No! Why not? I'm not continuing this stupid conversation. Well, if he gives you the lift to work, why doesn't he give you the lift home from work? Or does he? And you're just not telling me? Terry, I'm 30 years of age. I'm not going to be treated like a kid. Now, if there's something else on your mind other than lifts, then say it. If not, just change the subject. I've got a splitting headache, and I've had enough of this. Oh, I don't know, Sim, but I don't know anything about keeping ends. Oh, come on. I mean, they come with instructions, don't they? It's dead simple. Look, I used to be in charge of the ends at the orphanage. And you've heard of the bird man of Alcatraz, haven't you? Sinbad of the Coop. All right, then I'll give it a go. Yes. But you come with the birds, all right? You give me hand to build a coop for them, and you only get paid when they start to produce. Listen, mate, I remember Bernard Matthews saying them very same words. I presume you mean the same Bernard Matthews who now flogs newspapers outside Lime Street. Oh, yeah, Bernard Matthews. Right, we'll make a start before uh, those earths start to hatch. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Cyril. All right, Dad. Julia, Shh, I'm not here. I'll leave you to it, then. <sighs> oh, I'd rather be home any time now, and I don't want him to think I'm always here when he comes home. I just want to check that he's eating properly. Oh, I'm sure he's always happy to see you. Oh, you're probably right. But I just want to see if I can track down that Cyril Dixon. I'll see you before I go home. Oh, sounds like our rod now. Must have forgotten his keys. It's unusual for him. It wasn't our rod. It's a mate of his. Do you mind if he comes in and waits? No, it's all right. Come in, love. Well, Arthur, this is Diana, our rod's intended. Right, then. See you later. Right, then. You look a cup of tea's in order, don't you? Finish work then? Oh, about a minute ago. Good time, eh? Well, you're always very punctual. What do you want to do then? 
Well, I thought you were going to fix me up with a membership at the leisure centre. Oh, I have. It's all done. I'll show you around, eh? But, I mean, what do you want to do after that? Well, uh, I was planning on doing a bit of training, like. Oh, well, the problem is, you have to be a member for over 24 hours, you know, before you can use the facilities. Well, what happens if you're only here for one night, then? Well, residents have a limited membership, and I've got you a full one. It's something to do with law or something, probably the insurance. Well, um, what do you want to do, then? Well, like I said, I'll show you around. I thought we could have a cup of coffee and a chat. How's that? Oh, all right. Well, come on then, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith? It'd be amazed how many Mr. Smiths we have staying here at the time. Oh, you're joking, aren't you? People don't get up to that, do they? Well, don't worry. Be safe with me. Yeah. That's what I told my girlfriend. I love that dog. But Rod didn't kill it. He'd never do anything like that. He's a busy, isn't he? He killed dogs, all right. And people. I bet the cops kill more people than we ever get to hear about. He'd kill my sake, not right. Might not have struck any blows. But if it wasn't for your Rodney, my sake would be alive today. But I don't understand. Rod said he died of a heart attack. The police vet said it was very old and it just died. That's exactly what I'm trying to say, isn't it? It was a police vet. They tell us anything. I've been down the pub with my mate Polo. And he reckons a rotty like Satan would never have an heart attack because he was just too laid back for that sort of thing. And would Polo know more than the police vet? You tell the truth, for starters. People think he's thick. You call him Polo because people think there's a bit missing in the middle. But when it comes to dogs, he knows. Dogs and fishing. You want to know anything about dogs and fishing? Ask Polo. And you've been in the pub with him all day? Not all last night. I mean, if a bloke can't drown his sorrows after his dog dies, or was killed, when is he entitled to have a drink? I love that dog. I don't understand. Why do you want to see Rod? Compensation. Satan was a champion. How did I tell you that? I don't think so. Well, he was. See me? Yeah. I know about dogs. And my half fella knows even more than me about dogs. And we know what a champion is. That's how I met your Rod. And I know you know. I believe you. It doesn't look like he's coming straight home. Well, no, he's probably setting somebody else up like he set me up. So I had to do community work because of him. And my half fella got sent down for a month, all because of your precious Rodney. I don't understand. I know you. You work in the, um, what's it? The, uh, fancy chemist? A pharmacy. That's it. I said to Rod the Plot, before I knew who he was like, when I thought he was just another poor bloke working in Ainsworth's supermarket. Ainsworth's rotten supermarket that sacked me. I said, you'll be all right with her, Rod. She works in the chemist. You never be short of a pack of the three. <laughs> Listen, why don't you go and come back later when Rod'll be in? I love that song. My mate Polo reckons they never have heart attacks. Any chance of another cup of tea? All right, and then you'll have to go. in the house, Ron Dixon. And I'm telling you, Julia Brogan, me dad is not in the house. Even though his caravanette is parked in the front of your house? Even though the caravanette is at the front of our house. Well, he can't hide from me forever. I know things. No, oh, I. What sort of things? You'd be amazed. And I know this will never work. Two grown men, and you've not thought of the obvious. What's that, then? 
Sex. And if you want that hen to lay eggs, it'll need a partner. Yeah, well, it's not on its own, is it? I mean, there's another five of them. All hens? Yeah, well, so what? <laughs> no wonder you're single. What are you getting at? If you want that hen to lay eggs, there has to be certain things that go on beforehand. S E X. Is that right? Ask your father. Whenever he turns up. Listen, if she's right, you throw a cock in for nothing. Oh, come off it, Ron. Where am I going to get a cock from? Same place you got the ends. Yeah, but they're different, aren't they? I mean, they scratch and fight. Could have my eye out. Yeah, so can I. It's only when you start questioning yourself that you realise how much knowledge you've gained over the years. Well, some of us, at least. Go and get some more nails out the garage, will you? So you don't know when Cyril will be back, then? That is if, as you say, he's gone anywhere. You know what he's like, Julia? Mm, more than most. How's your auntie in uh, Wolverhampton? I haven't got an auntie in Wolverhampton. Did you visit your mum's grave, Ron? You what? Do you visit your mum's grave? I think it's important to remember and have respect for dead relatives. Julia, I don't think it's really any of your business who I remember or respect. <laughs> I bet you don't even know where it is. My mum's grave, as a matter of fact, I do. Kirkdale Cemetery, near the War Memorial. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. What are you going on about it for, anyway? You sure now? Yeah, yeah, I've got everything. Passport? You sure you don't want to give her a ring? Yeah. Poor? No, come on, let's go. Hello? Bumper. Oh, is that you, Rod? You're late, aren't you? Diana and your mate Arthur are waiting for you. This is a sabbatier. Yeah. It's a really good knife. I know about things, you know. Used to work in a butcher's. But I got the sack for oversleeping. Butchers start really early, you know. But I learnt about knives, and this is a really good one. <sighs> you don't get many of these in just ordinary houses. Tough chef jobs, these. Listen to that. A good knife should sound just like a tuning fork. Oh, yeah. Come in. Hey, what are we doing in here? It's all right. I've got the only key. Will you come in? That wasn't what I meant. I wanted to take you somewhere quiet where I could make us a cup of coffee. It's a perk of the job. Nice room, isn't it? It's very nice. That's not the point, is it? I've almost forgotten how much I think of you, Owen. Oh, look, don't you mean thought, Sammy? It's been ages since we were going out together. A lot's happened since. I know you've seen other people, and so have I. Yeah. You've lived with someone, though, haven't you? Yes, I have. And I don't regret it, because it was right at the time. I mean, all right, he let me down and made a fool of me. But I learnt a lot about myself. I learnt that you'd have to look after yourself and take what you want and don't lose it. Oh, no. Uh... What is it that you want right now, eh, son? No. I don't. I want you. I mean, you just want me to say it, don't you? Oh, do I? You want me to say that I want to go to bed with you? You never did before. Well, it wasn't right then, was it? Oh, and uh, it is now, then, eh? Yeah. You're kidding, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm 
one's going to come in. I mean, don't tell me you don't want to. Look, I don't want to, all right. I promised Grace I was only here today to get a membership at the gym from you. You can't just expect us to pick up where we left off. I'm getting off. Owen. See you around, Sally. Owen. Don't you think you should go now? I still think I should get some compensation for my Satan. Well, see Rod at the station, then. No chance. And get blamed for something that I never did. That's him. Stop fussing. He's going to be a professional footballer. A tough sport. And he won't have you there to take care of his every knock and bruise. He's got to look after himself now. That's supposed to make me feel better. See you soon then, Big Brad. Yeah. You ain't looking after that room till I get back, remember? Fat chance to my room now. Phew. I think you can get through today without falling out. Come on, son. Anyway, Jeff, take care of yourself, won't you? You'll be all right, Dad. I know you will. You see, your girlfriend didn't think enough about you to get in touch. Jeff. I thought you ain't gonna bother. I just don't want to see you go. I hate saying goodbye, especially to you. Are you going to keep in touch, then? Just try and stop me. No. How about a letter every day? I've already got my supply of phone cards. Jeff? Yes. <laughs> Let him go. I've always said we had the finest police force in the world, and I'm proud that one of my own is a hero in that force. Well, I'll go and see if Diana's got over the shock yet. Yeah. Ta-da, Jill. See ya. All quiet in the Western Front. Nice one, son. Cyril Dixon, I want a word with you. Oh, hello, Julian. How are you keeping? Well, I'm very well, thank you very much. I've been doing a bit of travelling. Almost as much as you. Uh, travelling? Mm. Morecambe, Wolverhampton. You've got some explaining to do, haven't you? Yeah, well, I, uh, I, uh, I... How much do you know? Enough to deserve an explanation. you better explain to them about cocks and ends. Cos you know all about being the cockerel, don't you, Cyril Dixon? Oh, we can't talk here and now. <laughs> you don't think I'm going to let you off the hook and have time to think, do you? I've waited a long time for this. Well, I, I better come clean, haven't I? Throw myself on your mercy. Who's the woman that was buried? My wife. And the woman in Wolverhampton? My wife. And, um, the woman that was buried in Kirkdale Cemetery by the War Memorial. Ron's mum. My wife. Three wives. All at the same time.
chickies. Quack, quack. Quack. Do you have a fight? Could have told you that, couldn't I? They'd have been nicked. Well, perhaps Sinbad's been back and taken them. No, he was desperate to get shut at them, wasn't he? Bawk! Bawk! <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> you, you look like Dudley Moore. You what? Isn't that odd? Chick, chick, chicken! Oh, very funny. At least you could always help me look for them. Bawk! Bawk! They could be miles away by now. Yeah, but you never know, do you? Oh, well, come on, you can help me look or what? I've got enough to do with this. No, you're not going to make your fortune on six eggs a day, are you? Ah, oh, suit yourself. Walk, walk! Walk, walk, walk! Walk! Walk, walk, walk! Morning. Gets you this poultry farming, does it? Yeah, well, it does when somebody sneaks around here and deliberately lets all your birds go. Uh, have they gone, then? Uh, you hadn't noticed, like? No, no I hadn't. Uh... What a pity. Shame they weren't homing pigeons, eh? Or parrots. Maybe then they could have told everyone who did it, eh? Very busy. Yeah. He did it, you know him. I can tell smarmy swine. Oh, not again. I don't want any more trouble. Listen, dear, if I find out it's yeah, him... Yeah, but I'm... you can't prove it's him, can you? Bye. Been out. Over Sue's. I can't get Lee and Gemma the childminders. Why can Auntie Lou go on all day another time? <laughs> She's entitled to a break, you know. I know. We're still stuck for someone to mind these two, though. So the number she's given me is engaged. Couldn't you have them in the front of the cab? Do you want me to lose my job? Are the drivers do it? Well, I'm not, the drivers. Anyway, these two will be all right with your mask on the market. They don't like kids hanging around. Well, at least that's not illegal. All right, you two. Come on, turn that telly off. Is Terry back yet? No. He was there. Who? Barry Grant. This time in the morning. I'll be on his way to his new shops. It's funny how he only seems to be there when Terry isn't. You have got a filthy mind, lady. You want to save that gossip for the markets. Ow. Aren't you going in today? Oh, I might do later. As Margaret's taken Thomas out for the day, I thought I'd take advantage of the peace and quiet here. Oh. Shouldn't you be on your way? No, it's my day off today, remember? Uh, going to see that school with Susanna. How could I forget? She's never off the phone. Well, it's only one day and it's important. You only just started this job. Do you have to take the whole day off? No, but Geoffrey suggested it. He always did like Susanna, didn't he? Still don't see why you have to go at all. Well, you know what she's like. She's a snob. She just wants to convey the right image. Mr and Mrs Farnham. This is 1991. Don't tell me there aren't other children at the school with divorced parents. There's still a stigma attached. Stigma or not? What, you're saying they're going to refuse to accept their exorbitant fees from divorcees? I think the whole outing's a farce. Well, it's what she wants. Oh, that's all right, then. For the kids' sake. It's only one day. She's on her own after this. Good. Hello, oh, love. Everything all right? The mystery man returns. I wonder when you'd show up. Well, me. Well, you know me. Julie doesn't know, does she? What? Well, she's been on the phone half a dozen times asking if you were here. I hope you're not giving her the runaround. What, the runaround? I hope you have the decency to tell her if you want to stop seeing her. No, no, we're fine, fine. Don't you find she's a bit funny, some of the things she says? What things? A lot of things. She wanted to know if Ron had an auntie in Wolverhampton. Uh, no, you must have got that wrong. Ron swears that's what she said. She spoke to Ron? Mm, yeah. Then she wanted to know where Ron's mum was buried. Oh, she's getting things mixed up. She, she keeps getting things wrong these days, that's all. How are you going, Dad? 
Hey, how are you going, Dad? Oh, oh, all right, love, yeah. Hey, Mum, I'm just nipping down to the pool. I won't be long. OK, love. Mum? In here! Mum, is there any chance of us using the front room tomorrow? I want to run through a few things with the new singer. Oh, do we have to have guitars and drums, whatever, in the house? No, it's not that. It's just a singer. Well, I suppose so, but don't annoy the neighbours. She won't do that. She's good. Hey, can I come and listen? No, you can't. This is a private meeting. <laughs> Even I can't come. <laughs> like that, is it? No, I just don't want you hanging around, that's all. Or at home. Well, you better tell him, then. Well, look, I'll be down to the pool anyway. I thought you'd given that up. No, no one's a chance of going to Holland with the swimming club. You're a man of park swimming club? Yeah, since I was 11. <laughs> My cousin used to be in that. Ricky Chambers. Oh, yeah, he was with the same trainer as me, Barney. Hey, look, Mum, I'll have to go. I'll see you after. Sure, Grandad. See you, love. Come with. Are you sure you're all right, Cyril? Well, oh, yeah, fine, love. Hey, I hope you're going to see that Julia Brogan, Dad. I think you and Ed have got some talking to do, haven't you? How do you mean? Well, you can tell her to stop ringing here for the kick-off. How are you a dump her double quick, you know? God knows what lumber you'll get into with her. All I did was call round to the house. I'm threatening my girlfriend with a carving knife. I didn't. We could have you good style on this, you know. Drop off, will you? You wanted revenge, didn't you? You wanted to get back at me because of us doing you and your dad for that illegal dog fighting. All I did was call round to the house. To get back at me? Yeah. You must have been making a good few bob off the dog fighting. You think you're dead clever because of that, don't you? What's a lousy dog fight? Well, you won't be doing it again, will you? Who cares? When did you do this? Come in, bud. Stop whinging, will you? Last week, I had to go to court. Why the hell didn't you tell us? Mum, I've got nothing to do. Where's the toys you brought? I'll play with them. We'll play with them again, then. You should have told us, not bottled it up like this. Well, you took hard to keep your heads above water. You've got your own debts. I know, but... Well, what about the money from you? You don't know, right? Oh, you know me. How far behind you? 1,500 quid, nearly a year. God, no wonder they're repossessing. It's just what I've always wanted, a home of my own. If the interest rates hadn't gone up, I could have managed. Mum, I'm hungry. You've just had a pasty. I'm starving. Yeah. Take Gemma and get some off dogs. Go on. <laughs> I wish you told us. I was ashamed having my house taken off me. Those could keep up with the arrears. Can you go back to your dad's? Oh, not now, not after this. I'll have to find a bed sit or something. It's me things I'm worried about. I don't know when they'll throw me out. Where am I going to put everything? We'll sort something out, don't worry. <laughs> oh, no, not again. Let's try and look after them, will you? I told you to keep out of his way. I was only playing. Right, I've had enough of this. I'm going to ring Mickey. Can I have them? Oh, we can manage. No, we can't. You're going home. And you two, don't you dare move. Bit posh, isn't it? What, you think it's OTT? Well... Is it? Well, I'd say it was rather more suitable for evening wear than being interviewed by the headmaster of some tatty little prep school. You know, I think I'm going to enjoy this new job. Jeffy reckons he can get me a new car when the Volvo's ready to go. He's even organised for my first all-expenses trip away. Oh, I forgot to tell you, he wants me to go away for a while. What for? Inspecting industrial sites in Wales, um, small factories, that kind of thing. I thought all his business was over here. Yeah, it is. It's some new clients he's picked up. Met them through the round table in Wrexham. Why doesn't he go, then? Well, he knows, sir. Uh, I don't like being office-bound. Oh. I've only just got back from London myself, and now you're going to be working away. Well, we'll be coming back. Well, how long are you going for? It depends how long I make it. You know, I can't wait. Work a day, loaf around a day, be a nice break. What about Thomas and...? Oh, that'll be Susanna Mustache. I thought you were picking her up. Oh, we changed plan yesterday. Have you seen my wallet? Try the kitchen. You said I'd be late. What time do you call this? Hi, Patricia. Hello, Susanna. We're not that late. I'll wait in the car. All the years we were together, that was his biggest fault, being late. Oh, I just... Mm. Goodbye. 
takes me back a bit. When we were having our affair, I used to park round the corner from Susanna's and beep the horn. You're doing a good job there, son. More than some will do. Found us a keyboard player. Just like all the rest, he wants to run the band. Why are they always so awkward, eh? Here you are, lads. Uh, thank you very much. He's earned his, you haven't. I'll fetch you one, Michael. Let him get his own. Dad, look, I mightn't seem busy to you, but I am. I'm desperate for a keyboard player here. I'm glad I don't have to work under that kind of pressure. Now you too. Hey, what's your dad doing parked outside the cork hills? Waiting for the mad woman, I expect. Oh, hiya, love. Hiya. Hiya, love. Excuse me. Uh, it might relieve a bit of distress if he carried in a few tins of baked beans, you know. I'm going to phone this keyboard player. Something wrong with it? Yeah, not really. Just a bit of muck on the brakes. How did the swimming go? All right, my times weren't too bad, but I definitely need better ones for tomorrow, though, if I want to go on that tour to Holland. When is it? September, but the final selections are tomorrow. I went to Holland once. Dad had to drive a car back to Liverpool, Amsterdam. Oh, we're staying in um, Utrecht. Yeah, right. Are you waiting for your A-level results? I've got a place at our college if I get the grades. Oh, so you're going to be an artist? Graphic designer. I want to do advertising and that. God, I'm last at all. I painted the whale on that. <laughs> Good job I didn't say anything, eh? I could really do something with that. What's that, son? Well, Dad, Keith reckons he could paint the mobile for you. I mean, it's OK, is A repaint? Hey, yeah, he's going to our college. Our college, eh? Well, I suppose he could use a repaint. I was thinking of a redesign job. Something to change your image. All right, then, great, do it. There's loads of paint in the garage, help yourself. I can get some spraying gear off me, Dad. Nice of him, isn't it? Pity's not more like him. Eh, uh, Dad? Eh, uh, I was wondering if you wanted to come and watch me trials tomorrow. Oh, I can't do it tomorrow, Jack, love. I'm too busy with the shop. Oh, come on, Dad. You never come and see me swimming. What's this, love? Oh, no, it's just me Dad can't come and see me do the swimming trials with the Holland tour tomorrow. All oh, right, hey, Jack, I would if I could, but I can't. I'm too busy, love. Oh, Mum, can you come, then? Uh. Oh, come on, you never come and see me either. I mean, I've been swimming for five years. Well, I come for an hour. Is that OK? Oh, yeah, that's great. Plenty of time. Hey, Keith's offered to paint the mobile, you know. Really? The pity someone else wasn't as helpful. Where is he? Oh, he's in the garage looking for some paint. Hey? Well, he's going to paint the mobile for me, Dad. Ah, oh, whose idea was that? Yours? Oh, yeah, and why should it be mine? Look, I'm not stupid, you know. I can see you fancy him. Oh, hey, I don't. Just keep away, OK? I don't want you interfering with his drumming. Hey, I'm trying to get a band together here. If you wanted to paint vans, you should have stayed with your dad's garage. You think you know about me? But you know nothing? Just because you got me for a lousy dog fight? I've done loads more jobs than that. Oh, pull the other one, Arthur. You're a no-mark. I'm telling you. I've done loads of jobs, and you know nothing. Making sweets from Ainsley's supermarket, yeah? I said jobs. I mean proper jobs. I know what's happening around here. I could walk in on any job I like, mate. Rubbish. If you'd have been a bit clever, you could have gotten me for something a bit better than a lousy dogfight. Yeah, well, we have got you now, haven't we? I didn't do anything. I didn't touch you. She let me in. Because she was terrified. Oh, I see. You fit me up just to keep in with your girl. No need to fit you up. You did it. Diana's a good witness. She's lying. I never did anything. Well, even if you didn't, you still deserve locking up. You what? Well, all these other jobs you've done. You can't prove anything. No need to. I can get you for this. I want my solicitor here. I'm not having this. Never mind solicitors. It's me rights. I'm not soft. I want you to tell me about some of these other things you've done. You what? Well, we could have a drink now and then. Just you and me. Any pub you like. What would it be worth, then? Well, Diana might be too busy looking for wedding dresses to make a statement. She's a liar anyway. Who do you think the judge is going to believe? 
What about them CIT blokes you saw me? I can talk to them. So can I go now? Just as long as you realise that I want to drink with you regular, to have a little chat about these other jobs and your mates. Listen, I want this keeping between you and me. Go straight home, eh, Arth? Julia, please, you've got to let me explain, love. Don't you love me, Cyril Dixon? You're a rat. No, it's not what you think. You're a bigamist and a rat, and you wish you'd never met me when I finished with you. Julia, you've got to let me explain. I want to tell you what happened. I brewed up in the car. Just give us a few minutes. Five minutes and no more. And whatever you say, you won't keep me quiet about this, you know. Have you told our Ron and ZZ? Not yet. Julia, please don't. It's not for me, I'm not worth it, but it'd break their hearts. And what about those poor women in Rochdale and Wolverhampton? The first two are dead now, God bless them. And what about the other two? I suppose you're just waiting for them to pop off so you can collect the insurance. No. No, it's not like that. You know what it's like being a widow. Oh, yeah. Pray to every silver-tongued rat like you, Cyril Dixon. No, I'm talking about the emptiness, the loneliness, the lack of companionship. Didn't you ever feel that? It's the same for everyone who's left behind. All my last three wives were widows when I met them. They were all empty and lonely. And you tricked them. No. When they proposed, I just couldn't say no. They proposed? How could I say no, eh? I couldn't love them without marrying them. That wouldn't have been right. How could I? And they were happier for it. When Mabel died, she died happy. We had five smashing years. I've discussed this with our rat. To Bobby? Hmm? What's he gonna do? He hasn't got all the details just yet. You're not gonna tell him? I haven't decided. So you better keep yourself available, haven't you? Julia! Oh! And don't think of doing a bunk, cos the minute I can't find you at home, I'll tell everyone. And you know what that means, don't you? Seven years maximum. That's for each offence. I bumped into Lucinda the other day. Mm. She'd have gone to work for Geoffrey ages ago. Well, it's like paradise after the last job. What's the verdict from her? I'm only repeating what she said. She thinks you and Geoffrey should have got together years ago. Who knows? You might have been a partner by now. I'm just happy to be back in work. Oh, hello, love. Here, let me help you with that. No, it's all right. I can manage. <coughs> you look after your visitor. There's, uh, some tea in the pot. Uh, not for me, thanks. How did it go? Well, it seems like a decent enough school. I'm sure the children will like it. How long were you there? You seem to have been gone an awfully long time. Oh, we went for lunch. <laughs> lunch was over three hours ago. Well, we had to eat sometime. Uh, my fault. I treated him. How nice. Yes, it was, wasn't it, Max? A place called the Huntsman's Inn near Chester. Max and I used to go there. <laughs> we were just remembering our first anniversary together, weren't we, Max? Yeah, well, I don't think uh, Patricia's interested in that. Oh, silly me. You could have phoned. I thought you were in the office. No, I thought I'd take the afternoon off and spend some time with my husband. Well, I thought you were at work. You didn't mention anything about spending time with me. Do I have to say it out loud? Do we have to argue about I'm it? I'm not arguing. I'm just I saying. I think I made a mistake in inviting you, Max. I'd better go. No, no, there's no need to. How would you feel, Susanna, if you came home and found your husband drinking tea with his ex-wife? Unfortunately, I haven't got one. As you said, you'd better go. Do you have to be so rude? It's all right. I'm going. I'd sooner you didn't come here again, Susanna. What? Come with Matthew and Emily, but not by yourself. Goodbye. Did you have to react like that? You had the whole afternoon off. You preferred to spend it with her. We went for lunch, that's all. Mom. 
I can't get on the car park, son. But you and Gemma go fetch him. I'm a basin to go to the toilet. She's going to sleep. Oh, why didn't you two behave yourselves on the store, like? I've got to go to the toilet. I'll leave her in there. You go and fetch your mum. Why did you have to be so rude to Susanna? Why did you have to go out to lunch with her? Because she invited me. What's wrong with that? She snaps her fingers and you jump. That's ridiculous. Is it? Is it? She's forever on the phone asking you to call her back. And it seems to me you can't wait to get back to her. Comes before everything. She's got custody of the kids, for God's sake. It's because... What? What were you going to say? What is it? I think there could still be something between you. Of course there is! The children! I mean, I might not be married to her, but... They're still my kids, and I have to talk to her. She wants you back. You're being crazy. Then why take you out to lunch? Why go to somewhere where you used to go together? She still fancies you, and you're playing into her hands. All this Mr and Mrs Farnham stuff at the school, it's, it's just a way to get you on your own. You can't see it, but I can. You must be mad. You're being completely ridiculous. Gemma's not here. What? Well, I, I locked her in. I was only gone a minute, and I, I came back and she... Gemma! Gemma! What are you doing with my daughter? It's not her. Where is she? Chris Jagger hosts The Dating Game with a Difference. Change of Heart is coming up next on Living. All night. Yeah, nothing. Police are doing a line search and starting more house to house inquiries. Oh, somebody must know something. Yeah, do though. How's Josie taking it? She was still awake at six when I got back this morning. Hiya, uh, have you heard anything? Nah. Well, look, if there's anything I can do, I can take the day off. It's all right, Sue. a Bobby in there with her. Well, you know where to get me anyway. Oh, well, you better get in and see it to Josie, Mick. I'll see you later. 
so hopeless, you know. Going to work as normal. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'll go down and see if you need a hand with the search. Promise you'll let me know if you hear anything? Yeah. Hey, and don't forget I'm picking you up later. Um, is there any news? What I want to ask was, is there anyone you can think of that might hold a grudge against you or your wife, Mr. Johnson? I told him Tony wouldn't do anything like that. Your wife can't think of anyone? Neither can I. And there's nobody you can think of that might have a claim on Gemma? Claim? I'm just asking, Mr. Johnson, I know Gemma's your daughter, but we get a lot of cases these days of divorced people going against custody orders. No, nothing like that. Look, I know it's hard, but it's been 15 hours now. We have to look at the possibility that she may have been abducted. What kind of person could have done a thing like that? Oh, Gemma! This isn't helping anybody. We should be down there taking that markets and everywhere around it to pieces. They are doing. You know the search has been widened. I get it. Patricia Farnham, my next door neighbour. I'm so sorry to hear of that. I just wondered if there was anything I could do to help, or, or Margaret, she could come and sit in. Oh, thanks, yeah. I think we'll be okay. Just wanted to ask. Is Gemma back yet? <laughs> hey, looks that good. Give me the compliments when it's finished. Hey, it's your big day at the bats, isn't it? Yeah, hey, little Gemma's gonna be all right. Yeah, might think some pervert will have got her. Are we sick and fancy saying that? Hey, come on, Mum, we've got to go. It's only news of Gemma. Do you think I should go over? I want me on Mr. Childs. We'll pass her something I can do later when they found her. It must be terrible just waiting. Oh, come on. Good luck. There you go. Thanks. Sure you don't want one? Why don't you try and get some sleep, love? We'll wake you up if we in. I just want my Gemma. I've always dressed her nice. She's always so pretty. People in the shops and everywhere see how lovely she is. And now some animal! <laughs> <laughs> you must be hurt. Think like that. Look, we don't know anything for sure. We get kiddies go missing all the time. <laughs> well, remember the one that was taken from the hospital in London last year? <laughs> well, it took a while, but she was well looked after when they found her. What about the baby who hasn't been found? I don't think the worst, Josie. <laughs> Do you want the news? The bloody papers are full of it! Josie. It's all your fault. You shouldn't have left her! She'd be safe and well and here with me. You shouldn't have left her! Rowing between yourselves won't help, will it? <laughs> Hello? Yes, that's right. Just a minute. It's a reporter he'd like to speak to you. No status. Well, how about you? I wouldn't know what to say. Just answer the questions you want to answer. It might help. I don't know. No, not now. Are you sure? <laughs> Sorry, mate, they're a bit upset at the moment. Perhaps later, eh? I said they're upset. <laughs> Publicity can help, you know. Sorry. I couldn't face it. You fed up with this. You gotta have patience, son. Can't do it. 
Of course you can. They're still out there. Can't get them moved. The press are perfectly entitled to wait as long as they're not causing any trouble. They were hassling me, asking all sorts of questions. Isn't that causing trouble? Sorry. Marcia? What, Lee? Can I watch Meadowcroft Park? Not today. Can't I, Dad? You won't want that, son. Oh, it's just started now. Let him watch it. Do you watch this? No time, Leo. Is it good? My girls say it is. <laughs> Don't you think you should talk to the press, Mick? I mean, I know it's on the radio and the, the, the papers have got the photographs, but they've got to have something new to keep them interested. I mean, publicity could be down to nothing by tomorrow. Tomorrow. These things take time, and the more we keep them in the public eye, the better. If I hadn't left the market stall early yesterday... Don't blame yourself, Marsh. We could have managed with the kids between us. This wouldn't have happened. It's my fault. No one else's. I shouldn't have left her. Holland, here we come. And we didn't get the qualifying time. We used to won. Yeah, but I didn't get the time I needed. I won't be going to Holland's or anyway with the club. What? If you just took a bit more interest in this, maybe you'd be able to understand. I mean, I wasn't just racing against the others. I was racing against the qualifying time. And it isn't good enough. I'm just not good enough. If they're still hanging around, something must have happened. You're wishing on them. I've heard nothing on the radio. Well, I mean, she went missing last night, didn't she? So anything could have happened to her. All right, Keith, how's it going? Oh, yeah. Is it OK? <laughs> People on this stage are going to think I'm coming to money. That's great, that, yeah, I like it. How much do I owe you? It's OK, honest. Come on, how much? I'm enjoying myself, Mr Dixon. It's OK. Well, 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 a new corporate image, eh? All right, lads. If it's Dee Dee, you're after your mister. Uh, well, it's you I want, Ron. Um, years gone by. Time for your annual donation to the church. Youth club camp. Yeah, I, I should have phoned, I know, but uh, I've suddenly got this free afternoon and I thought, um, well, I don't want the church to miss out on its freebies from you uh, non-believers. No problem, oh, your reverence. Keith, can you knock off for an hour? I'm going to need the mobile to go to cash and carry. Uh, not really. If it gets dust on it enough. Another time, then. You can borrow my van. Is there much? Only the usual, you know, boxes of baked beans and coke and that. You sure? I'm not using it. Problem solved. I'll just make a couple of calls, but on my way, OK? It's very kind of you. No problem. Hey, Ed. I'm all right. I just noticed the van. <laughs> hey, you can keep your eyes off her and all. I think even Max should be pleased, eh? Oh, yeah, the, uh, the neighbour with the overdeveloped aesthetic sense. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I, uh, I just called round for Ron's annual donation to the parish. Food for the youth club summer camp. Oh, right, you go with them? Well, if I didn't organise them, I'd never go away. Yeah, we're, we're going to the lakes for a couple of weeks. You know, not far from Oldswater. Oh, I've been there with my mum and dad. Yeah, stuffy. Be a nice change. I can't really remember it much. I think we stayed in a guest house. Nothing so luxurious for us old scout tents. <laughs> I can't imagine you camping. Priest's life is camping. You know, a sort of gypsy life. Never knowing where you might get shifted. Sleeping on people's sofas if you're working late. Right. No, oh, I love it. It's uh, be a nice change, you know. Away from the phone and the doorbell. Mm. You know, if you're interested, we could always find another place in the minibus. Me? Well, you do get a holiday, don't you? You leave next Monday. Um, oh, I'm not sure. It might be difficult, you know, we work. Well, we'd certainly welcome your experience. You look after one baby all year, I have to look after 25 for a fortnight. Well? Well, can I think about <laughs> it? Aye, aye, father. <laughs> I 
you had to beat your own swimming time. Mum, I told you on the way. I didn't understand. Your dad would have. Oh, yeah, except he never takes any interest either. Oh, it was just a question of finding the time, love. Yeah, but he used to find the time for our Michael when he played football after school. And that was only for a year. Yeah, but he's always been interested in football, hasn't he? Yeah, but Mum, I've been swimming for years. Since I was a kid. I mean, I'd still like to get somewhere with it. I oh, know, and I'm sure you will. I didn't realise how important it was to you. I, a bit more practice, perhaps. Yeah, but I still won't be going to Ireland. I oh, know. I'm sorry, I really am. Look, Jack, I'm going to have to go to work. Are you going to come and get the bus? No, I think I might go in and watch the others. There's just a couple of them outside. Well, last time I looked. I'll try, sir. I'll let you know. Bye. That was the uh, chief inspector in the press office. The top brass have asked him if you can arrange a press conference. Why don't they keep on searching? How many cops is it going to take to run a press conference? We've got the manpower. They have dozens of press conferences a year. It's best to keep on looking, surely. She hasn't said a word in hours. How can she do that? What do you think, Josie? <sighs> If it were one of my girls, I wouldn't think twice. What do you think, Jules? If you've heard what he said, it might help. Take out. Why? Why, Jules? I'm mean, sure, sure they'll make it easy on you. They've done it before. They won't let the media harass you, Josie. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Jos. Because everybody be talking about me, pointing the finger, saying she didn't look after her baby, saying she's not fit to be a mother. Oh, Lord, they've got the press over there now. Yeah. Any news? It's been the same on the radio all day. Yeah, Patricia said she was going over, did she? Well, there's nothing she could do, and police have been all there all day. Must be agony for them. Oh, hello. May we come in? Daddy, Daddy! Oh, no, darling. We tried to race you, but we couldn't catch you. Oh. You go too fast. Yeah, much too fast. <laughs> We were just coming out of the safari park. Matthew spotted your car. Mm. Can we go in the garden? Yes, all right. You two go along. I'll join you later. What's happening next door? Oh, their little girl went missing last night. Really? Oh, horrible. No, yeah, she's only five. You are keeping our little Tommy. Thomas. Oh, sorry. Is Tommy coming out to play? <laughs> <laughs> do you know Patricia will be home soon? <laughs> what do you want me to do? I can't turn my own children away. She won't mind. How about a takeaway? I'll pay. It's a deal. Only if you promise to come out for a meal with me on Monday. Monday? Yeah, it's our anniversary. Two years, remember? Well, I wondered when you'd mention that. <laughs> Do you fancy a nice, quiet meal at home? See how it goes, eh? <laughs> <sighs> oh, all right. What did it say? If you don't mix, kid. My name's Jen. Yeah, it's over 24 hours now. I think I should go over there and see Mick, you know. Listen here, I want to get the insurance certificates out the drawer in the kitchen, all right? Uh, Don't you want to eat before you see Mick? No, I think I'd better go over there and see him, mate. I'll get the food on the way back, all right? See you later. See you, buddy. Right, Trying to avoid being alone with me, eh? I thought you wanted us to as far apart as possible. I thought that was your strategy with me and Terry. What's it like with the solicitor today? Still getting nice little lifts home, are we? Graham still gives me lifts occasionally, yes. Isn't he the lucky one? Look, Barry, I know what you're trying to do, but it won't work. What am I trying to do, Sue? You know damn well. You've resented me since the minute I met your mate. All the time you're looking for something, something to use as a wedge between us. Well, you can't use Graham. Don't think Sally will swallow that. He knows all about Graham. Oh, why? He knows all about the lifts I get off Graham. I've told him, sorry. Well, you won't mind if I ask him then, will you? Just to check out, like. 
Please yourself, I'm not bluffing. All I know is, me and Terry are doing OK again now and I just don't want you messing us about. Well, he's still a mate, I can still see him. I'm not asking you not to see him. You've known him longer than me. There's just no need to cause trouble between us, that's all I'm saying. All right. I suppose I've been a bit stupid about all this, haven't I? Even nasty. I'm quite willing to put up with you coming round here for Terry's sake. But just please keep your distance from me, all right? OK. Well, Matthew, be careful. Oh, he's all right, he's all right. And a big monkey sat on the bonnet. Oh! It was a baboon, not a monkey. Matthew said it was going to do a wheelie on Mummy's car. Oh, did it now? No, something worse. <laughs> Guess how many lives we saw that day. Um... Hello, everyone. Oh, hi. Patricia. Any news of Gemma? No, nothing at all. That's why I've nipped home. So I see. Well, I hope you don't mind us dropping in. The children insisted. Were you ready to from the safari park? <laughs> well, Daddy was going past just as we were leaving. Nice surprise for us. Mm. Very nice. Can I have some orange? Well, I... That's all right. No, Patricia will make it, won't you? Uh, oh, yeah, uh, orange juice all round. Oh, I think I prefer tea. Yeah, oh, yeah, me too. Thanks, darling. Can we go again on Sunday, Daddy? to get Max back. Don't be daft. She is, she is. I can feel it. All this... All this stuff about, about schools, it's just, it's just a way to see more of him. She hates me. She hates me and she wants him back. Why does he go along with it? Why, does, why can't he see what it is she's trying to do? Oh, he loves his children. That's all he cares about. He doesn't care about her, not anymore. <laughs> Look, you know the other day you were walking in on us? Well, I had a talk to her and she doesn't care about him. I can tell. How do you know? I can just tell, just the way she was speaking. She just wants what's best for Matthew and Emily. I just know. You don't. You don't. <laughs> Whatever you think of me, me and Terry are going to be fine. Look, I'm sorry about Graham and Ola. It's just... After what happened with Martin, well, I suppose I was just protecting Terry, that's all. Yeah, well, we know where we stand now, Barry. Let's just forget about it all, OK? Agreed. Oh, how are we making Josie? Police want him to do some press conference or something. He must be in a state, mustn't he? Oh, do you think so? Well, it's been 24 hours, hasn't it? Yeah, that's what worries me. I think someone must have Gemma. Oh, no, poor Josie. Is there anything we can do? No. So it's going to be enough for Barry there? Well, er... Uh... Oh, look, you're all right, sir. Uh, see you later, Sue, sir. Bye. I'll go and get the plates. You changed your attitude towards him. Well, maybe he's just being a little bit more polite. Anyway, it's stupid arguing all the time, especially now he's not living here anymore. Yeah, and he is me mate, isn't he? I know. Listen, I'm sorry about getting uptight about that grey fella at work and that. Yeah, about time. Just makes you realise how lucky you are, doesn't it? I mean, I know what I went through at Christmas when them two loonies had you and Danny. Must be ten times worse for Mick. You didn't make it, then? What do you think? Hard luck. I'm going to be stuck here all through the holidays. Well, it's not fair. I've done much better times than some of them who got picked. you get other chances, won't you? Why, yeah, like next year. Well, that a way you can improve your times. I can't. The swimming club shut till they get back. Ah. Oh. You are in the state, aren't you? Never mind. Holland's dead expensive. And the Dutch guys I met were dead born. Here's your keys back, son. Oh, Tom, Mr. Dixon. When do I get my van back? Yeah. Should be able to finish tomorrow. Tomorrow? Can't wait that long. Can't you get it sorted out tonight? It's the paint drying, isn't it? 
Yeah, nevertheless, though, I'd still like it done tonight, all right? All right, yeah. That's why you're getting on at him. I just want me van back, that's all. Jacqueline, I just want me van back on the round. You know, she didn't do well enough to go on the Holland tour. Oh, yeah. Well, didn't you ask her? Pity. She's getting too close to that Keith lad, you know. Just found him canoodling out here. Oh, for God's sake, Ron. He's as old as our Michael, you know. Well, it's hardly going to be the romance of the century, is I it? I don't want there to be any romance, Dee. She's far too young for all of that. Oh, let's face it. She's probably got with dozens of lads before anyone means anything to her. Ron, get used to it. We've been all through it, sir. No joy. I'll try. Bye-bye. That was the press office again, Mick. What do you think, Jules? It's been over a day now. Do you think we should... That'll be Tess. I'll get it, Mick. This has been found about 400 yards from the market. It's Caris. Can you identify it? She wouldn't go anywhere without that doll. Chris Jagger tempts more sweethearts to stray from the path of true love in Change of Heart next. being so snotty with you before. He just seemed to change. Is it because of his chickens? No. I just don't suppose he thought it'd all take this long. Looks that good, though. There was another police car over there just before. God, I hope they found her. They would have brought her back if she was all right. Hey, don't say things like that. That's horrible. OK, I'm sorry, I'm looking to do for you. You could find us some more old drugs. Right. I heard what he said, Jules. Mr. Till help. Sooner or later, you're gonna have to talk to them, so why not get it over and done with in one go, eh? Hey, Jules, no one's gonna blame you. Because I'll be there to put them straight in what happened. That she was with me when it happened. But isn't the most important thing just to get her back, eh? I don't like the idea at all. But I still think we should do it. And if you won't do it, Jules, I'll go on my own without Leo and do it. But you heard what PC Grace said. Somebody could be holding her. Maybe some woman who's lost their kid. And if they see the real mother on the telly asking for Gemma back, then maybe. She would do it, Jules. Look, she's my daughter and all, you know. And I want to do everything I can to get her back. I don't care who blames me. I'm not bothered. It doesn't matter. 
Who cares whose fault it is? Let's just get her back. Let's do it, Jules. Do you do it? The three of us. Have a nice one. Hey, can I do a bit? I was always ace of colour. Is that all right? A bit slower. I was wondering... Do you fancy coming out with me one night? Jackie, there's washing up needs doing in there. Hey, yeah, I'll do it after. Yeah, now, if you don't mind. He'll never get finished with you messing about here. Well? Oh, no, I don't think so. I'm just nipping around the shop. I'd like that kitchen sorted out when I get back, OK? Yeah, all right. You can borrow my van again if you want, Mr Dixon. No, thanks. Just get it finished, will you? Um, Max, I don't want it to look as though I'm interfering, but I, I brought the orange juice out because I thought Patricia was upset. Well, actually, she was crying. Why? Well, I think you better ask yourself. Well, what was she saying? Um, the casserole's in the oven and the table's laid. I'll just go and see to Thomas. Oh, no, no, he's fine. Well, I'll just check on him. Susanna and the kids were sorry they couldn't say goodbye. Where did you get to? You came in for orange juice and just left us there sitting in the garden. Did you go to the safari park with Susanna and the kids? No! Susanna seemed very keen to put me off the scent. Oh, God, not that again. I made it plain to her yesterday that I didn't want to see her here again. You said she could come with the children, for God's sake. I didn't mean the next afternoon. Couldn't it have waited? Or is she so keen to see her these days that she'll turn up whenever it suits her? Is that it? It was completely by chance. If Matthew hadn't spotted me driving past the safari park, then they wouldn't have come at all. The kids wanted to. Without much prompting from Mummy. As I said, it was completely by chance, and you did say she could come with the kids. She loved every minute of it, didn't she? Why does she have to be so supercilious all the time, so sarcastic? A pair of you, you're, you're as bad as each other. She made me feel like a servant in my own home. And Thomas just dismisses him, treats him like a non-person. Oh, she never misses one single chance to needle me, never. Look, you know what she's like. She's always been like that, I assure you. Listen, she was wrong by us. So have I got to be punished for the rest of my life? Well, it's a natural reaction, don't you think? One day she'll grow up. And I've got to suffer because I'm the other woman. How long before she's the other woman, Max? How long? Don't be ridiculous. I have no feelings at all for Susanna, not now. None. Oh, come on, look, it's you I love. I hate having to see her. I know, but she's the mother of my children and we just have to put up with it, all right? So, Arthur, they're not going to charge him at all? Nope, I told him. If it wasn't for you, he might have ended up in jail by now. I don't think he's bad. I just don't think he's very intelligent. Yeah. It's hard. So do we still have to make a statement? No, not now, no point. Oh, my dad will be pleased. Have you told him I'm a bobby yet? I haven't really found the right time. Well, I'll have to find the right time, won't I? You said you wanted me to ask permission, your hand in marriage. Let's tell him, then. Isn't it best that I do that? We'll both tell him. He can come round here for his tea next week, right? And we'll tell him about the wedding. And then I'm a bobby. Oh, hadn't I better do that first? I just can't understand him. I mean, you're much better off marrying a copper than an assistant supermarket manager, aren't you? I mean, we're much better paid. I've got to get this sorted, you know. My hey, dad's all done. Dad, I thought you were going down to the shop. Had I been there now, if I hadn't forgotten my axe, so... Where is it? Where's it got to? It's always in here. I don't know. Well, you're the only one who'd use it. I'm supposed to be working out of the shop now. Well, how about our Tony, like? He's not here, is he? I bet it's in that flaming car of yours. Dad, it's not. Yeah, well, you want to try looking. It's not there. What do you plan to do with yourself today? Oh, come on, Dad. You're as bad as all Michael wanting me out the way. Well? Well, I suppose I could help Keith. I think Keith's doing all right in his own, isn't he? Oh, yeah. And what's wrong with helping him? Jackie, I did see you out there, you know. I'm not daft, love. Oh, well, it's not what you think. I mean, he was just trying to cheer me up about missing the Dutch swimming tour. Yeah, but where does that lead to? Oh, it's not leading to anything. 
Exactly. Listen, I was a teenager once as well, you know. Dad, I'm 15. Exactly. You should be knocking around with kids your own age now or out practising your swimming. Well, it's not as if I'm getting married to him or anything. I just like him, that's all. Jackie, I just don't want to see you get hurt, love. I mean, after all, he is our Michael's age, you know. Don't you think that that might be just a little bit too old for a girl your age? I don't know. Well, now, why should he be? Well, look at it this way, love. You get stuck on him now. After the summer holidays, he goes off to art college. He's going to meet a whole load of new people. There's going to be lots of girls there. Will he want you then, Jack? I'm telling you, love, he'll dump you. Well, thanks a lot, Dad. Look, there's no need for all this. Jackie, all I'm saying, love, is just think, eh? Hey? Well, all right, you stop being so nasty to him then. I mean, he's doing you a big favour. All right, all right, fair enough. But you just think about what I said. All right. All right. I think we need a break. No, I mean, a, a holiday. <sighs> it's out of the question. Well, not if we need it. Oh, be sensible, Max. No, 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 come on. I mean, you've, you've been overdoing it at work, and now this upset with Susanna. Everything's fine at the office. It's just... Yeah, I know, I know. Anyway, we're still owe on the kitchen. And you were out of work for weeks, and we spent a hell of a lot in Tenerife. No, I mean, Wales. It's work. Now, I've got to go there a week on Monday. It's all expenses paid. It'll cost us next to nothing. Why don't you come? I mean, Margaret will look after Thomas. It's awfully short notice. What about my work? Well, I thought you said everything was all right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. But I more or less told them that I wouldn't be taking a holiday this summer. Well, untell them. Now, all that slaving away you did for them in London, they can hardly say no. OK. I'll book the time off tomorrow. Mm. The press have cleared off. The will be down at headquarters. I'll stay here and mind Lee. Can't I come, Dad? I want to be on the telly. I think you'll be in the way, son. Ah. Oh. It's all right, Mickey. You can come. Yes. You come, Marcia. Oh, no, I'm better off staying here, Lee. Will we be on the news tonight, Dad? Remember what this is for, son. To find our Gemma. Ready, then. It'll take about 20 minutes to get there. Can I say? Well, just tell them what the police are doing the best to find it. There's nothing I can do, is there? I mean, there's even a bobby with them now, look. Oh, hang on. What's happening? Something might have happened. What are you coping at? You should be out searching for my Gemma! Come on, should be there, not you! Sorry, Mick. Change of plan. I'm afraid we'll have to go to the hospital. I said, come immediately, Cyril Dixon. And you've kept me waiting 25 minutes. I know, but I had to do a few things. When I snap my fingers, you jump. I wanted to get you these. You can't get round me with your flowers and chocolates. Is that how you did it with your three wives? <sighs> the whole world should know about you, bigamist. Julia, please. I hope you've been sitting by that telephone. I wanted to talk to you about that. Things are getting a bit desperate in Wolverhampton. I should be back there tonight. Oh, I'm sure you can think of a few lies to tell her. I mean, you've had enough practice. It's getting awkward. You should have thought about that before you started committing bigamy. Julia, please, what do you want? You and me are going to see your Rod. <laughs> Oh, 
afraid she'll have to have a checkup before she can go home. <laughs> Is she all right? She's a bit tight and hungry, they said. Thank God there was food where they found her. Can I come with her? It wasn't quite something what's happened to her. <laughs> You've got a burglar to thank for getting her back safe. One of our patrol cars caught him trying to break through the skylight of one of them portable office things, you know, like a container. Well, the lad was that scared he fell through and found your daughter. Do you think somebody deliberately locked her in? Shouldn't think so. Uh, apparently, the building company, the one building the new offices by the market, uh, went bust yesterday. And the receiver got called in and everything was shut down. Well, Gemma must have wandered in there just before they made everything secure. Fortunately, she had the sense to find the milk and biscuits the staff left behind. Didn't anybody think to check up on this? container thing. Well, it was the doll that distracted us, with that being found so far away. And she must have dropped it and some other kids must have moved it. God. <laughs> the main thing is she's back and okay. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you're not planning on stopping, Grandad. I'm expecting someone. Uh, if we're in the way, son, perhaps we could go, eh, Julie? No. There are things that have to be said. All right, Dad. Julia. Oh, Dad, is there any chance of you talking outside? I am expecting me singer. I don't know what we're supposed to be talking about. If we're busy, lad, we can go. I'm sure Ron can spare a few minutes for something so important. Listen, I'm supposed to be working at the shop, you know, Dad. What is all this about? I want you to think back on the years since your mother passed on, Ron. Not all that again, Julia. You're obsessed with my mother, you. That's what started it. When she died. Dad, what is all this? That's when I discovered your father's other life. Dad, do you think maybe you should take her home? Perhaps she's not feeling very well. I'm quite well, thank you, Ron Dixon. I want you to know the truth about your father. You don't know what he gets up to when he goes away for weeks on end, do you? Well, he is over 21, Julia. He can look after himself now, you know. Oh, I know that all right. Don't I, Cyril? Don't I, Cyril? That's... <sighs> That's right, Julia. So I'll tell you what he gets up to. Think on about what you're going to say, Julia, please. No. Ron has to be told. He looks after people less fortunate than himself. Now, isn't that nice? Old ladies living alone. He's like a knight in shining armour as far as they're concerned. And nowhere's too far for him to go to help. Is it so? Whether it's Rochdale, Morecambe, or Wolverhampton. Oh, well, that's nice to know. Well done, Dad. Oh, that's why I'm happy and proud to know him. Oh, no, Tina. Well, uh, if that's all, Julia, I've got things to do. OK. Ta da. That's how easy it is to what blow you, you to up, Sir Dixon. Dixon. You're really not going to tell her wrong, are you? That's a matter for me, isn't it? So you better be careful. I'll be ringing you next week. What for? Uh, are you two going now? You'll see, sir, I love. And you better take these back. But I bought them for you, love. I'm sure that woman in Wolverhampton deserves them more than me. And anyway, I ate plain chocolates. You know, I'm looking forward to Wales now. I hope the weather's nice. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking, though, about Margaret. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that's all right. She can look after Thomas. Oh, no, no, no. I want Thomas with us, together as a family. Well, she can stay here or go back to her mum's. Yeah, except that you were only saying the other day that you thought she could do with a break. Yeah, she'll get one. Well, wouldn't the Welsh mountain air be better than Liverpool or Oldham? Ah, you mean, would it be nice to have a babysitter whilst we're away? Hmm. Something like that. <laughs> Patricia, Max. It's just been on the radio. They found Gemma. Oh, brilliant. Is she OK? Where was she? She was locked in something at some offices or something. I just caught the end of it. Oh, thank God she's safe. I know. I can't wait to see her. Mick and Josie must be over the moon. I'm just waiting for them to come home. Uh, uh, Margaret, uh, Patricia and I have decided to go to Wales a week on Monday. I've got to go for work, you see. We, well, wondered if you'd like to come. Oh, um, I don't know. You don't know? Well, Father O'Farrell's asked me to help out with the youth club's summer camp to the lakes. Who? When? Um, this morning. He seemed quite keen I should go. 
Who's Father O'Farrell? Dee Dee Dixon's brother. I was going to ask you for the time off tonight. I've got to let him know by tomorrow. When did you get involved with the youth club? Oh, I'm not. There was just a spare place on the minibus. Oh, I thought you'd jump at the chance of a holiday. All the expenses paid. Yeah, I, I know, but I mean, I'm taking holidays specially. I know how disappointed you were not to come to Tenerife. I thought this might make it up to you a little bit. See, it's the first time we've been away as a family. First time we've managed it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell him I can't make it. I'll best go and ring him. How come she's been invited on holiday by a priest? Sounds positively indecent, right? <laughs> What's it like, my fella? He's doing my head in. How's that? That was great, Dad. Hey, up. Thought me chickens had come back for a minute. Dad? Only joking, only joking. Actually, it was very good, that, love. Only good for me tape measure. Ta-da! Look, we'll have to get a haul or something next time. We can't be doing with all this. It's OK. It's only the same as our house. I get told off for winding the dog up. The dog? Yeah, well, when he hears me, he wants to join in. He winds along, goes to tune. Ah, uh, right. Uh, I wrote these the other day. I wondered if you'd like to have a go of it. I've picked out a bit of a tune on the guitar. Like, it's, it's for you. For me? Especially. Oh, yeah. Oh, no one's ever done that for me before. Well, I was listening to you sing the other day, and, well, it's about a singer. Oh, uh, thanks. <coughs> Are you all right? Yeah, oh, it must be like hay fever or something. Now, if it was George Michael, I'd have been in a private hospital resting my voice. Well, I can go and get you some water if you want. It's all right. There's a throat spray in my back. Can you pass it? in a plastic bottle, actually. You don't smoke that stuff, do you? No wonder you cough. I don't do enough of it to make me cough. Well, it's still rubbish, isn't it? You're a prude, aren't you? It's no different than smoking. Oh, why, well, yeah. Smoking doesn't screw up your memory or make you laugh like a stupid divvy, does it? Or unfit to drive? <laughs> Been reading the leaflets at school. If this is me granddad, I'll kill him. All right, Tickle. Believe you've got something to mind. We're busy. Busy? Even your drummer's moonlighting, painting a mobile shop. Hang on a minute. Who invited you in? Just checking you're looking after it. What do you want? I promised to go through these songs. Ah, oh, that's showbiz. Come on, we've got a party to go to. Hey, I arranged this session days ago. Well, I'm unarranging it. Come on. You don't have to go, you know. Who says? Look, wait outside. I won't be a minute. One minute. You know, she's too good for a band like The Losers. That is the name of the band, isn't it? Hmm. Why'd you let him treat you like that? What'd you see in him? It's only because you two don't get on. Does he get you that stuff? Is that all it is? Look, I've got to go. All the time, eh, Mike? It's Mum. Mm. <laughs> all right, Ma. How are you? Yeah, I know, but we didn't want you sitting there in Cardiff worrying, that's why. Yeah, well, there's no harm done. Is he getting in the neck, is he? <laughs> Thought he might be. Get that, please, Lee. How are you? You've seen us on the telly, you know. Yeah, well, the police wanted us to do a press conference. <laughs> How is she? Hiya. <laughs> She's Hello. fine, isn't you, darling? How are you doing, Mel? Look what I've got for you. Oh, is it all right for her to have that now? Oh, she can eat chocolate. She's sick as she likes. <laughs> It's all over now. All right, then, Mark. See you tomorrow. Bye. How are you? Relieved, mate. I'd have cracked up if it'd been our Danny gone that long. I'd have to your auntie kids. <laughs> Get a year bashing, did you? Well, you could say that. Your ma's ringing back with an address. Said I've got to book a caravan down Aberyst with somewhere. We've all got to go on holiday together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can you manage to? Yeah, no problem. You get off, have a break. Cheers, mate. I'm never going to leave you on your own again, am I? Oh, oh what's wrong with Dolly's feet? What's wrong with her feet? That must be the wrong one. It's on the wrong one. Must be. Right, that's it, Mr Dixon. All finished. Oh, good. Right, what do I owe you? It's all right. I enjoyed it. No, come on, you've got to take something. How much do I owe you? It's OK. Hey, it's good, though, isn't it? Yeah, very nice. At least I got my own bun back. I'll see you then. Keith. 
Uh, what you said before, I will go with you. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bring it all right. What was all the whispering about? What's going on? He just asked me to go out with the motto. Oh, did he? No way. You what? I said, no way. I put you straight before, didn't I? You keep away from him. Yeah, and why should I? I told you why. Well, you best tell me again. You watch your lip, madam. Oh, no, go on, you tell me. Oh, no, you can't, can you? Because the only objection you've got towards him is that he's black. Don't be soft. Oh, no, he was all right. He was a nice lad. Keep this and keep that until he started talking to me. You know what you are, Dad? You're just a racist. Chris Jagger entices two more couples to stray from the path of true love in Change of Heart after the break.